You ever wonder what to do with all that leftover oatmeal? Well, this week I'm going to show you what to do with it the ancient Viking way. This week we make Thor's Scrapple. This week's recipe is a Nordic Way recipe. That means we're going to be traveling to Viking Age Scandinavia and uh, tribal Germanic lands for our inspiration. Now, every year at uh, the Hale and Horn gathering, there is a feast called a Hussel, and it's in honor of one of the Old Norse gods. And one of the years, we honored Thor. Now, that year, I came up with a recipe called Thor's Scrapple, and that's what I'm going to be cooking for us today. Now, the idea behind it is that the different orders in Old Norse society um, had access to different qualities of food. And so the Jarl class, the nobility, had white breads, finely ground flowers. The uh, Karl class, uh, the craftspeople, the free farmers, etc. They had uh, rye breads or other types of milled grains. And then the very poorest class, the thralls, had rough bran breads and porridges. Now, of course, this isn't a hard and fast rule. All orders of uh, society uh, up to the top could eat the coarsest foods if they so chose. But the access to some of the most refined foods was very, very rare for the poorest amongst the, the Old Norse. <clears throat> so one of the other things, though, is that Thor, in the uh, lore that's come down to us from Dark Ages Europe, is that Thor was associated quite often with the poorer classes of society, particularly the thralls. And now the thralls, they might be um, considered something along the lines of a serf or a slave, depending on the time and place. Now, one of the most basic foods is not bread uh, of the poorest classes, it's porridge and gruels. And this has always been th so through time in many, many different civilizations and societies. It's the easiest thing to make. It doesn't require any um, uh, milling or, or preparation. And it doesn't, uh, if there's a lot of boiling, then the coarsest types of grains can be consumed. And so, however, though, we have a feast situation. So we don't want to just provide gruel or grain as our food stuff. So we want to dress up, up a bit. So what um, we did was we went to the tradition of um, solidified porridges. In Scotland and Northern England, up until fairly recently, and maybe still today, there was the traditional porridge drawer where the old porridge um, that wasn't used during the day was poured out. And then throughout the day uh, and the next day, you could slice off pieces of that porridge to have instead of bread. Now, one of the ways to dress up this porridge was to, uh, solidified porridge, was to actually fry it to, uh, into, um, into, in a slab. This is also very similar to other types of dishes we see around Europe, such as polenta. Um, it's currently made with corn in, in parts of Italy. However, before corn, before the Columbian exchange, uh, before corn was in Europe, other types of grains would be used for this type of preparation. We also see in Appalachia uh, the tradition of having what's called scrapple. And this, uh, I believe, was uh, originally a German tradition uh, where you make head cheese from the head of a pig, basically boiling off uh, all the meat as well as cartilage, and then mixing in cornmeal into that to create a very, very thick mush. And that would be set and sliced and fried. And so we took the name Scrapple from this North American um, hybrid dish, and we took the, uh, the rough porridge that probably uh, of a type that would have been consumed in Northern Europe during the Viking Age to come up with this dish called Thor's Scrapple. So welcome and uh, join me for uh, cooking the recipe. For this recipe, we're going to need a mixture of grains. Here we have oat groats, that's whole oats. We also have pot barley. It's hard to get barley that doesn't have um, the outside of the grain um, polished off. Pot barley seems to have a little bit more of the uh, outside of the grain still on it. That's what you want. I also have whole rye kernels here. I have flaxseed. Um, now this is ground flaxseed. Ground flaxseed just uh, works better. Uh, it keeps the porridge together. Um, if the flax seeds are, are whole, they don't uh, work as well to bind the uh, porridge. I also have here uh, Scottish oatmeal. This is oat groats that have been slightly polished and then cracked. You do not want to use um, 
uh, oat flakes in this. That's a modern invention uh, uh, that uses um, a, a hot rolling process with steel plates. All of these grains uh, use um, uh, stone grinding or no processing whatsoever. Now for each of these we have a half, uh, sorry, a quarter cup of each of these grains here and then a half cup of the um, Scottish grind oatmeal. And here I have some gray salt. Now uh, salt is important. This is a, a sea salt. It's non-iodized and it's called gray salt because it still has a lot of the minerals uh, from the, um, the clay beds where the, uh, the salt is um, evaporated and then scraped. And this is much more like the flavor and type of salt that would have been available during the Viking Age. For this recipe, we will also need four and a half cups of water, as well as lard for frying. First, add cold water to the pot and warm it up. Then you'll add your salt and stir that around so that it dissolves. To that, once it's starting to heat up, you'll add all of your grains. An alternative to using the individual grains is just using a mix of Red River cereal and Scottish oatmeal. Beside me you see something that looks like a wand, but it's actually called a spurtle. It is a traditional Scottish cooking implement. Originally this would have just been a uh, peeled birch stick. It's specifically for stirring oatmeal and other types of uh, stews and soups. Because the grains aren't rinsed, you may need to get rid of foreign bodies or bits of debris that uh, is floating in the liquid. So we've had the, the uh, pot on the heat for a little while. Uh, as you can see, the bubbles uh, are uh, coming up. Um, once it turns to a rolling boil, you want to turn down the heat a little bit so that you get more of a simmer. Um, a strong, fast simmer is good. You just have to remember to stir the liquid uh, a lot, particularly at the start and at the very end. The very end is critical because what you want to do is develop a consistency where it's extremely thick, more so than a porridge. You want to be able to see the bottom of the pot when you stir it with the spurtle. So um, doing the stirring method with the spurtle, you can see how it's sort of volcanic looking now. It's starting to thicken up a lot but you still have to wait. You have to make sure that when you're stirring it like this with the spurtle, you can see the bottom of the pot. Oh, it's getting better now. Uh, it's a much thicker consistency. This might take uh, some time, more than half an hour perhaps, depending on how high you have your heat and the evaporative um, area of your pot. There it is, the bottom of the pot. Also too, when you're stirring, remember to scrape down the sides every now and then, because you don't want to uh, end with a bunch, a lot of caked material on the uh, sides of your pot. Take your pot off the heat for a couple of minutes, but don't let it cool down too much. Uh, just enough so it's easily workable. I'm taking the uh, porridge here and putting it into mini loaf tins that are silicone. These uh, work really well because they don't stick. If you have uh, loaf tins or um, uh, bread pans, use those, but uh, use parchment paper or, uh, or, or grease or something like that in it so that uh, you can use it as a form. Uh, from this amount of oatmeal, I got three mini loaf tins out of it, which is about nine servings of uh, scrapple. Next, we have to chill down the scrapple. Uh, we come, I put it in the freezer. Uh, you can also use the fridge. Uh, I just needed to get this done a little bit faster. You don't want it to freeze though, of course. After the porridge has really solidified, turn it out onto a cutting board. It's a lot easier to cut through this sticky mess if your knife is oiled uh, or uh, with, uh, has lots of water on it. Um, I like using water just because it's a lot less messy. Uh, cut it into thick slices. Um, for uh, blocks about this size, I used, um, I, I cut it into three pieces. Here's the leaf lard. Uh, this is what I'm going to fry the uh, porridge in to make the scrapple. It's from uh, the black pig, which is a heritage breed of pig uh, from Upper Canada Valley Meats. 
Leaf lard is from uh, fat that accumulates around the organs of the, uh, of the animal. I'm rendering it down here. Once it uh, is rendered down, you'll get uh, the fat in the pan for frying, but you'll have to take out the solids. Don't throw away the solids though, because these solids are what they call in Newfoundland scrunchions, and they are absolutely delicious. They're a lot like crackling, and you use it for, uh, for serving the um, scrapple. So here we go, going into the lard. You have to watch your temperature because as you add the scrapple, it, the temperature goes up and down. It helps to be cooking with a really heavy pan like this one uh, that is cast iron because the temperature stays fairly even. You notice that I'm not deep frying these. It's just shallow frying. Uh, the, uh, the practice of deep frying was not really that uh, attested to in uh, Dark Ages Europe, particularly in Northern Europe. What we're looking for when we're frying is a nice golden brown color. A uh, few areas we want a really dark nutty brown color. Now, the it's a bit hard to get uh, an even color on these because uh, of the uneven texture of the outside of the porridge bars. So just do what you can. Uh, what we're looking for here is textural differences because the outside should be really, really crunchy and the inside creamy. The different grains absorb different amounts of liquid, so they'll have a different tooth and uh, mouth feel. So it's all about those types of contrasts. Also too, have some kitchen paper ready and put it out on that so it can drain right away. Also too, as uh, when it's still hot, you'll want to salt it with the gray salt. Well now, it's time for our tasting. This is going to be wonderful. I have here some friends with me. They're going to help me taste this as well. Here's Kadri, my daughter, and my friend Baz again. So, this is going to be really delicious. I can't wait to try it. This is a picture of it. We have it here before us. I'm serving it here with the scrunchions on top. Hopefully these will be delicious. There's also a little bit of extra salt added there, guys. So um, I hope you really like it. Now um, it's going to be our chance here to give a few tasting notes. Um, tonight later we're going to be eating it as well with this delicious meal of salmon bits and coleslaw. But first let's try this as an appetizer. Skull. Try this out now. The saltiness of the crunch is great. <laughs> yeah, it is. Mm. Mm. It's really uh, something I like about this is the separate grains, the creamy barley, and the nutty taste. It's so great. I love it. It's really delicious, actually. I'd make this again. Last time we had it was good, but it's even better here with the lard. It's... Um, so delicious. Love it. What do you think? I like how it goes from soft to hard and back to soft again once you put it in your mouth. <laughs> Seriously, though, it's a salty treat fit for anybody. I love the textural contrast. It's so good how it's both crunchy and smooth. And it tastes really good. I love it. It's like... Porridge bacon! So yummy! Mm. Yes, I, I think so too. Delicious. Looks like this one was a winner. Yeah, yeah! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The salt in the scraplin is great. <laughs> You're a salty scraplin! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Been scraplin for years, thanks! <laughs> yeah. Well, I think uh, scrapplin's a great thing to eat, but also to do. Yeah, I love scrapping. <laughs> See, well, that was uh, this week's edition of Heathen Hearth. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Come on, guys. Out this way. I hope you liked that video. Please give it a thumbs up down below, and I'd love to hear your comments as well. Also, too, remember to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you get notifications. You might like this video as well, so check it out. There's also playlists, so you can check those out as well. Until next time, keep cooking.